growing weary of running from room to room, practicing one-tooth insurance-driven dentistry? Then stay tuned for the latest episode of The Lionhearted, where Dr. Steven Rasner will hand you the blueprint for what many call the gold standard of general practice dentistry. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The Lionhearted Dentist. Thank you to my colleagues, especially in Germany and Ireland. You have been just downloading my ideas to death, and thank you. And thanks to the rest of you. I don't care if your country downloads one episode a week. I'm here for whoever out there wants to hear me. This week, I'm going to tell you, as I try to lately, the subject of my podcast, and it's going to be called The Tipping Point, and I also want to give you one brief clinical tip, because I've been doing that, as you know, in the last few months. Um, but let me get back to the, what's this tipping point? I didn't coin that phrase, as you know. It was based on a book by a guy named Malcolm Glidewell. And in that book, he described a tipping point as that magic moment when an idea, a trend, a social behavior crosses a threshold tips, and then spreads like wildfire. And ladies and gentlemen, my friends and colleagues all over the world, if you follow the Lionhearted podcast principles, I would believe that many of you are experiencing a tipping point, which I will define by an inordinate amount of case acceptance and work for you to do if you choose to do it all. So much so that you might need an associate if you never hired one. Or if you have an associate, you might need a second one. Or adding a hygienist. Let me tell you something. These principles that I've shared with you for the last two years, they, they just work. I don't know how else to say it. And they don't even cost anything except sweat, vigilance, attention to detail. Yeah, it costs that. But here's my thing. I think about this a lot lately. Even if you didn't go after the numbers that I've achieved, which are crazy. You know, six months ago, I started giving you the $47,000 Tuesday. I remember it. The $30,000 Thursday or whatever numbers I gave you. And I want to tell you something. I don't know how to say this humbly. Some of you are probably laughing. Do I know how to say anything humbly? I hope so. I certainly never try to come off as some expert that this can only happen for me. It's why I'm sharing with you what I'm sharing. But I've, I've had solid, rock solid record type of numbers of a solo practice or a practice in two locations for more years than I can remember. I mean, from the beginning, 40 years ago, I really never experienced a downtrend. But in 2021, and I, quite honestly, for the last 12 months, it's mind boggling. And I know why. And I've talked about it on other podcasts. And you, if you're tuning in for the first time or you're listening to me for the fifth time, you must listen and believe my words. That the principles, week in and week out, whether it be what I talked about last week, of making sure your team brings their A game every week. How I've taught you to brand. Do you even know what I'm talking about? What what principles that I tell you you should be branding? I'm going to get into that. The importance that you have systems in place to retain your existing patients. Your attention to detail on are you scheduling properly? For, or are you just randomly scheduling? And the very, very true 
cornerstone that I gave you many times in that every day, are you or are you not? Before the day starts, is it in the mind of you? Is it in the mind of your staff, your team? Every one of them, from assistant to new patient coordinator, financial coordinator, schedulers, insurance, that they want to present themselves. Pardon me for this. Like a Broadway play. Don't, don't change the channel. Like you are on stage. So that the people that come in that day, which is every day, leave with a wow factor. Not a wow, you didn't do good clinical work, because that is a very big part of the Lionhearted Dentist. You do all this fluffy stuff, make people feel value, stress a relationship-based practice, and your clinical work sucks, sorry, uh, your clinical work is mediocre, then I don't expect you to have this tipping point experience. Here's why, but before I get to the here's why, in case some of you just tune in weekly for the clinical tip, I'm going to give you that right now and come back to the tipping point why. Clinical tip number whatever. I've talked about this, but I don't know that you've heard me. There's a product you should have called Hydrocast. It's a soft tissue, tissue conditioner, and it can be used in a multitude of ways every day in your practice. And I'm gonna go over that. And it's made by a company called Sultan, S-U-L-T-A-N. It's a liquid powder ratio. It was never intended for most of the things I'm gonna tell you to use it for. It was originally intended for an old denture technique by a very famous doctor named Earl Pound. And his philosophy was carried on into the last century by Jack Turbyfill. And I did it. It was to give you maximum stability with full dentures. We're not even talking implants. Here's how I use it in, the, in a number of ways. Let's say a patient comes into you and their chief complaint is that their denture is a little bit loose. And you look at their ridge and you're not sure if they need a new denture, you're not sure if a reline will help. So this is a diagnostic purpose of it. So you mix the two products in a matter of three minutes you coat the denture that they're existing, denture that they're wearing with, and you tell them to go home and see if, it, if it's greatly improved. If it is, a reline is warranted. You see, I'm trying to eliminate those scenarios you may run into where you do a procedure and a patient's disappointed. So one of those would be, I know it's just a reline, but we don't want to disappoint our patients on any level, do we, really? And guess what? If they go home and it's not any better and you have already considered there's not other things about this denture, short margins on the borders or an over or under extension of the palate, etc., then you know a reline will work. Okay? Number two, if it does improve it, but the teeth are very worn, it's an opportunity also that you know you can make a successful final new denture. So that's one way. Way more impacting your everyday dentistry is when I insert any full upper denture. This is me. Particularly a patient that I've extracted teeth on. Not that day, even a couple months before. Uh, sometimes my partial dentures. I will reline it automatically and they wear that for a period of 30 to 60 days until they're totally happy. And in between my dental assistants, reline the hydrocast, they take it out. There's a burning knife that you'll purchase to get out the old hydrocast. The assistants recode it, you check occlusion, and they're on their way. And it just minimizes a lot of unnecessary visits 
from brand new denture patients or even partial denture patients with significant acrylic covering soft tissue. So I wouldn't poo poo it. I've had many, many soft tissue conditioners I've experienced. I certainly don't have any connection with Sultan, but that's my tip for the day on automatically reline a denture. And guess what? It fits really sweet when you do that. You know, I guess if you put in a new denture and it gives you a 10 on a scale of one to 10, then I guess you could skip it. But it's a, it's the way that I, I certainly handle a lot of my patients during a transition period, the transition of wearing a brand new full denture for the first time, or even a partial with a lot of coverage of soft tissue if they've never worn a partial before. So let's get back to the tipping point. So here's why, and I've told you this before, but I want you to reconsider it because I want, it is so extraordinary. Listen, you're talking to a guy who a lot of dentists know my numbers around this country. And I've always stressed to you that it's really not about the numbers, but I have to talk about them because they're so off the charts. But it's crazier than ever because when you achieve a certain level of revenue, of income coming in your practice on a weekly basis and then a monthly basis, you break past the point we all do of breaking even. Hopefully all of us are doing that, correct? And then there's an area where you start to be profitable. And if you looked at a graph, it would slope, you know, perhaps at a 25 degree rise, but you reach a point. You know, let's say that your goal every month is 40,000. And I would say from 40 to 50, maybe even 60 per month, you'll start to feel that. And certainly it feels good to you because your bank account gets thicker and that takes pressure off you. And there's a line I have in many of my lectures where I say, may you never go into another Thursday, assuming you work Monday through Thursday, knowing that you have to get another case or that you come into a Monday with that thought. You know what a beautiful thing it is to practice dentistry on your terms, present new treatment to patients, put all your emphasis in educating that patient, which is what you should be doing and let them make sound decisions. You know, I had a patient last year. I don't know if I've told you this, forgive me if I have, he was 90 years old. Now I know, and don't pontificate or lecture me with an email after I tell you what happened because 90 year olds are very different. I have many in my practice. Some of them play golf almost daily. They drive to my office. And certainly I have many 74 year olds that don't look long for this world. I'm being honest. But this guy came in and he wanted implants. He had a denture that he had had made somewhere. You know, and we went through the whole thing and I, I did take a CBCT on him. And it looked like, as quick as I, it was a quick diagnosis, that he had enough bone. I would not, I would re, probably had refused to take him through the process of GBR. I would not have grown bone on this patient. But if the bone was there, which I didn't expect it to be, I'm not sure what I was going to do. So I started to talk to him and make sure that he was aware. You know, did you ever have this happen? Did you ever have a lot of patients indicate to you that money's not the problem? Because in their mind, they're thinking $5,000 or $7,000 or even 10. We both know that four implants, a bar, and a fixed or removable prosthesis on that bar is not five or $10,000. So I wanted him to know this. And no matter what I said to him, he seemed not to be dissuaded. And I said, this is what I'd like you to do. If you go home and tell your children, because that's what I'm thinking, 
that you're about to spend whatever it was, it was over 20000 on your mouth, they're going to think I talked you into it. And I know you know I didn't. What I think you should really do, if you don't mind, and it was a, it was a risk. I mean, it wasn't a risk. Because I didn't care if I got the case, other than to make, fulfill what he wanted. It didn't matter my business month. And that's what I mean. That's, a, that's an attitude that great weeks do bring you. You know why I talk to you like that? Because there was many times in my life that I didn't practice like that. You always tell me, to, to, to hear me say, in the beginning, man, in the first 10 to 15 years of your life, if you can just keep it conservative, it is so hard to do. If you can live below your means and save as much as you can, it really sets you up forever. But I didn't do that. How honest can I be with you? I didn't do that. Quite the opposite. That's why I talk to you like this. Because it's been like this for quite a while. And it's a wonderful way to practice. And so, he did go home. And he called me back. He came back in for another console. And he was in today. That's probably why I'm talking about it. And he smiles at me. And he reaches out and touches my hand. And thanks me. <laughs> you know, I didn't know. Because I've never done a nine-year-old. I've done, as many of you... Big cases on 80-some-year-olds. Many. I don't know what the, the wrong lot age is. I just had never done a 90-year-old. So why did I tell you all that? Well, I told you that because we're going back to the tipping point for a minute. So if you, you're looking for 40000 a month and you get to 50 and 60, when you go beyond 60, you're, it, just amazing things start to happen. Just, you have abundant, abundant cash flow. And this is not to be confused with the PPP money you got. Because that's not real. That's a once in your lifetime thing. I practiced 40 years. And that happened last year for the only time. And of course we all know it. It happened this year as well. And that, I don't mean looking at your PPP money. Because that was free money. That we'll never get again. It's a blessing to all of us that needed it. And I'm just saying, this is the result of what I'm here hitting you with every week. So what are those things? Why do I think that's happening? I'm 100% sure that it's this. I'm 100% sure it's because in a great feat of irony, because so many dentists have gotten out and gotten into corporate dentistry. And if I never made it clear before, let me make it clear now. I'm not faulting you. If you get the payday of your lifetime and the terms are good for you, then you should. You know, I don't know if I'll do that. Maybe I will someday. I mean, what are you going to do? Work a lifetime and build up a practice of two, three, four, five? five million and sell for 20% of that because no dentist can afford. You know, back in the day, we didn't sell our practices to equity firms and DSOs. That's not what happened. You'd get a young guy and bring him in and he'd buy the practice. And that's just not very popular these days. So I'm not against that. But I'm also going to look you in the eye and any that wants to tell me that the equity firm that purchased you, the DSO, excuse me, that purchased you, doesn't have any other intention except lowering your overhead and upping your productivity. They all have a goal of increasing your productivity by at least 10%, and they can do it because they can buy products cheaper than you can. And they don't have to keep certain one of your employees that may be overpaid by their standards. Maybe not by yours, but by theirs. And they can market the hell out of the world as you couldn't. So that's what's going to happen. And I'm pretty sure they don't have meetings on a monthly basis like I do, and a weekly basis like I do, on how to improve our marginal dentistry, our clinical margins, 
Harperio on everything. That is not most bottom line. I can't say I know every DSO in the country. I don't. And I have heard there are others that I just don't know the details about. But for the majority, you know I speak the truth. So why tell you all that? Because it's great for you and I. You're damn right it is. I have never. It is a 45 degree curve, if not more steep. Maybe 80 degrees right now. On patients who espouse to me that they came to me because they're dentists of 10 years. They're dentists of 20 years. Sold out. And they didn't like the new environment. It's the truth. You know, so the line art of dentist certainly is not about building up a big practice and selling to a corporation. That's not why I come on here. I want you to have the dream I had. And the dream that I had was my own business. I don't want anybody telling me who I can hire, what lab I can use, what equipment I can have or not have. It's not why I did this. And I was always like this. And I know that if you do the things I talk about, branding, your brand should be trust and confidence. That should be your message. How do you get that out there? We'll do a whole podcast on that coming up. But the short answer is, depends where you live. If you live in rural areas, you use hard copy. A newspaper that may be in the town or near your town. Or free giveaway newspapers that people pick up at shopping centers and markets. I've used them for years after year. They don't always give me an equal return. Naturally, we're all, all on top of this. I have found in recent years a surprising, shockingly effective magazine you've heard me allude to. So I never believed in them. So I don't know everything. This magazine somehow approached me. And the thought of putting together a magazine that was about me, that I created albeit through this company. I had doubts whether that would work, but it did. It's profound. It's mailed to area zip codes that I wanted to get mailed to. And it's not inexpensive, but if you have a million dollar practice or even a 500,000 practice, you should write to me. I get nothing by you joining on with them. I'm just trying to help you. So I used a magazine very effectively in the last three years. I've used radio. What would I do? I, honestly, if I was in Atlanta, New York City, Chicago, I would hit your local neighbor communities with the hard paper thing advertising we talked about. I'd be big on social media, which I am also. And we could go on and on and on. So you have to brand, but... You know, you'll never catch a lion-hearted dentist that listens to me branding that they're, uh, they're $450 dentures or they're $525 crowns because I think that's a losing recipe because that implies volume and that's not what I want you to, to follow. It's not fulfilling. It's not rewarding. And you certainly can't do quality care that way. You can't. So let's not pretend otherwise. Uh, great retention of existing patients. Do you have a program in place or not? You've got to ask yourself these questions. It's June, man. We're five months in to 2021. We're one year after most of us went back to work. There's no excuses. This, this success I'm alluding to is certainly not unique to me. You can have it. It's hard work, but it's right in front of you. When I talk about great retention, I'm talking about recall. No matter what system you have in place, you have people going out the back door that you can't comprehend. So I offer a financial incentive to four members of my 18 member staff because it's I've tried everything else. I'm, I don't want to take up your time telling you what I've tried. Uh, prizes for the most recalls in a month. Mandatory recall, as if I can reinforce that. When I'm going to fire somebody, when they say I was really busy this week, Doc, I couldn't get my five. No. 
Hopefully it'll be somebody in your office that'll care enough to do it. Recall is huge. You know, mastering the whole atmosphere of the practice of the new patient experience, as well as anybody you're presenting work to, where you the goal is for them to leave feeling good about you. Happened to me today. Whether they purchased from you or not. It's the absolute truth. I had a patient return to me today for the first time in eight years. She didn't have a giant treatment plan. New partial denture, two crowns, and periotherapy. I think about seven grand. And when I'm talking to her, she alluded that money was really tight. I said, listen, she had a partial that was really suffering. I said what I've told you podcast after podcast recently. I said, listen, Janet, I'm not here selling you. Do you feel that? I am talking to you. I've known you for a long time. I haven't seen you in nine years, but I'm thrilled. Love it when a new patient comes back that was an old patient. And, you know, I had done sinus lifts on her 15 years ago. That looked like I did them a year ago. They're perfect. And most of her mouth was good, but she was one of these patients that her dentist retired. And she went to a new place and they were talking about, I don't know, an $18,000 treatment plan, removing a lot of her teeth. And I just didn't see it that way. And I don't, I always tell a patient that wants a second opinion, that I'm going to tell you the truth, exactly what I think, not something that's less than they offered you. I say that so that you'll like me and come back to me. I'd rather you not do anything and give you a product that compromises what I really need to do. And I really believe that, as should you. So again, the tipping point is when you put all these principles or some of them into place, now more than ever they work because there's so many people coming in to that large nucleus I'm trying to get you to build. Because the nucleus is the community of your patient care it's not always active. Remember me talking about that. There's a portion of it that never stopped coming to you. They are religious about their four month or six month recalls. There's a portion that spin off and you think they're gone. And they're not gone. They come back to you because they left with a good taste in their mouth, even though they didn't accept what you recommended whenever you recommended it. Please hit me with questions. Anything you don't get. Why else are we doing this? I appreciate you tuning in. I hope you've made some changes. I think it's time to look in the mirror and see where you're at in 2021 because we still have seven months left and we can turn it around. A lot of you have been writing to me. Please continue to do so. Let me know if these help you. Thanks. See you next week on The Lionhearted.